So, here we are. The end of the season. 26 episodes. 26 episodic adventures. We've reached the end of season one of Kogelioko, everyone. When I started this project on January 17th, 117, at a goal, one Lyoko episode per week. It's now been 26 weeks. Half the year has gone by. And here we are. One season down, three to go. False Start is the episode in question this week, and there's a lot here. False Start is part two of the season one finale. The reason why I say it's part two is because it picks up right directly where Coder left off. I lead us on Earth. And we get to experience her first day here. Everything looks set up and ready to go. Xana's going to be deactivated. This show is going to end. Everyone is going to end happily ever after. And given I lead us first day at school, this is an ending that, honestly, if it weren't for the upcoming twist, would have been okay. But, in the background, the series Bible was being completely rewritten from the ground up. To change a few things, the biggest change of this happened to be the Aelita as an AI thing. As a podcast without danger put multiple times in their 12 episode run thus far, the original plan in the series Bible, before it was altered, was to have Aelita remain an AI through, throughout, just now with a human body. This was changed completely. We wouldn't see the reverberations of this change until the end of season two. If you want to see a show that tried the original concept and failed miserably at it, reboot the Guardian Code is, essentially, Code Lyoko's original Bible idea. Having the AI character remain the AI, but also be present in the real and living world. I did a review of that. It was the last angry review I've ever done on this channel, for good reason. It's not only trampling on Code Lyoko's toes, it's doing it badly. But if you want to watch it, I guess I'll leave a link to it at the end card so you can hear me at my angry worst. But back to false start. After a wonderful first day of schooling in which even the teacher gets schooled as to what prime numbers are and the exact theory. By the way, that happens to be one of my favorite Aelita sequences in the entire show. It just comes off as so genetically superior to everyone else, as though Aelita was Charlotte Flair. And believe me, all of the things in this episode of Aelita spending her first day and night in the real world is wholesome. 
Jeremy and I meet at a picture booth, goofing around, taking pictures of each other as Jeremy takes her to Yumi's house. Everything in the school, school before the tragedy hits. It's just wholesome TV all the way through. Regardless of how toxic the Jeremy and Irina relationship will get. At this point, it's cute. Really cute. But it turns out the next day when they try to shut Xana down and thus end the show, here comes the twist. Ayelita suddenly goes completely comatose. Dead. Like that. When the computer is returned on, she reawakes. This is thought to have been a virus implanted. And for the entire second season, it practically goes with this notion. We'll constantly hear the term antivirus as we move forward when the main plot is introduced. But that's the basic conceit that they use to, well, continue the show. But on top of this, Santa is not only a sneaky, conniving bastard for taking away our complete happiness that we've earned from Code Earth. He's pissed off at the notion that the Lyoko Warriors would even try to end this show. And how does he do it? By, of course, activating a tower and performing the worst Lyoko attack yet. Bringing the actual Lyoko monsters into reality. And the monster of choice? The Cankerlots. 26 episodes ago, we were introduced to these little guys. And in our own mind, they're cannon fodder. But this is them in reality where things actually hurt, where people could actually die, and the threat is realistically real. So yes, these little buggers that come in groups of five are a living nightmare, and they go rampaging throughout Kadok Academy. Attacking students, teachers, blasting through windows, the whole nine, and they're on the hunt for our group. And thanks to great improvisation, just like a great horror movie, again, Code Lyoko with its horror references. They defend the school. Jeremy naturally, is reluctant to have Aelita dive back in. But, because Aelita is best character, she insists on it. And back into Lyoko she goes, even making note of not being able to feel or touch anything, having no sensation, is a saddening crushing realization. That's right. Everything from False Start has us everything from Code Earth in this moment seen to at the time of this episode's original airing had been reset. A truly devastating notion. Yes, the show was going to continue. But, at this moment, the cost of that continuation was high. But, 
thankfully, because this is a direct continuation without a time reset, Jim is on the good guy's side, helping the Lyoko Warriors defend the school students from the canker lots, and even looking pretty badass in the effort. But even he gets overwhelmed. And can't do it alone. And of course, it takes the entire group on Lyoko to shut the tower down and shut the canker lots up. Also equally devastating. Until the antivirus can be discovered and removed, I leader recommend staying on Lyoko, which is the final nail in our happiness coffin. The Lyoko Warriors have won the day, but have lost everything gained from the previous day, seeing that a time skip has to happen again for the 25th time. This makes False Start both wholesome and happy, but thanks to the sudden twist, bittersweet and crushing. The tension is at its all-time highest, the emotion at this point is at its all-time highest. Everything just makes you feel the entire roller coaster of emotions. It's the perfect season ender for something that is so fundamentally not based around tugging your emotional heartstrings. <laughs> Understand, this is a 6 out of 6 episode. And, a, and especially the last 5 episodes have been some of the strongest examples of Code Lyoko at its best. But, we continue forward. It would be an entire year and a half before we would see Code Lyoko again in 2003. It would take to the summer of 2003 before we would even see a clip of what's next. In the background, the computer technology that had propelled Lyoko into an undercover hit was being totally redone. The models totally refreshed. The animation totally redetailed. And as Preby before, the entire series Bible, the working soul of the entire show was being rewritten from the ground up. And the show came under new ownership by a company formerly known as Moonscope. They would also be responsible for a pretty kick-ass reboot of Fantastic Four at the same time during Code Lyoko's run. But, little did we know that the year and a half wait would be completely fucking worth it. And thus would begin, to me, in my opinion, the second greatest season of animated television ever. As far as season one goes, next week, later this week, I will give you my season one breakdown, my final review and my final season one score. Next week, however, we start season two. New Order, episode 27. An episode that would change the series forever. In fact, the next four episodes would begin a transformation that would redefine
find the entire series. Send us on our next great Leokian journey. And possibly down the rabbit hole of greatness. I hope you see me all the way then. And for all the people that have viewed the Idol Leader Diaries throughout Season 1 and will continue to do so, I have a heartfelt thank you. And to the crew of Podcast Without Danger, I miss you. I hope one day you will return to finish what you have begun. Until that moment arises, I will continue to do what you cannot. I will finish the story. I am the Leokian Cody Rhodes. And I hope all of you, years in the future and years in the past, join me as I start talking single-handedly about one of my favorite seasons ever. It's been a blast. I hope you will continue to watch until, well, later this week when we close the book on season one. Find peace, Leoka Warriors. I'll see you then.